Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to show you how to monitor Kafka consumer rebalancing using Confluent Control Center. I'm gonna be using the Control Center demo app, which we've got on GitHub in Confluent Inc. slash CP demo. Now we've got a whole separate video showing you how to get that set up. Make sure you watch that video and please follow along with the steps. Actually get the thing set up if you haven't yet. Before we get into it, let's revisit consumer groups briefly, just so we know what we're talking about. When a topic has multiple partitions and it's a topic that you're gonna to wanna to scale, you know, scale the consumption of it, you can increase the consumption throughput by creating a consumer group with multiple consumers in it. The cluster will assign topic partitions, remember this is a topic that's partitioned, to consumers in the group so each consumer can process data from the topic in parallel. This gives you a story for horizontally scaling on the consume side, and it's really cool. Now, a consumer rebalance happens when a consumer leaves the group or joins the group. And a consumer rebalance is just where the cluster is going to uh, reassign partitions to consumers in the group from where they were previously. Now, if you've already read to the back of the book, you know that there are a couple of other reasons besides just consumers entering and, and leaving the group, uh, but we're trying to keep this brief and focus on control center, so we'll skip those for now. The thing is, during a rebalance, consumption is paused. It has to be, and take note of that. We'll talk about it later. But back to Control Center, which is what this video is all about. Control Center shows which consumers in a group are consuming from which topic partitions and on which brokers those partitions reside. As a rebalance happens in a consumer group, Control Center will update its view and show you the rebalanced state of affairs. To see this in action, let's create a new consumer group called App and it's gonna have one consumer in it to start with. Now, notice I'm using a script here. This is helping me do things like, for example, configure interceptors on the topic so that Control Center is gonna be able to monitor traffic. And take note that this group is reading from a topic that has two partitions. Here we are back in the Control Center Streams monitoring view. Let's scroll down a little bit and look for a consumer group called App. Uh, there it is, that's the new consumer group that we just started. We can drill down and get more details about the group. Second, we see that the group is consuming messages from a topic called wikipedia.parsed, which, as I said a minute ago, has two partitions. Now, since there's only one consumer, we know for sure that it has to be reading both partitions in the topic, partition zero and partition one. Now you see the red bar in the graph? Because the consumer started up in the middle of a time window, some of the produced messages in this time period before the consumer started will not be consumed. So this counts as missed consumption or under consumption inside that window. From here on out, all the bars should be blue. Now, some more cool things we can see about the topic. Uh, remember the topic is wikipedia.parsed. In the topic management view, uh, we can scroll down here to that topic and view more information about it. You see it has two partitions, like we thought, a replication factor of two, and all of the replicas are in sync. Uh, that's all good. Now, clicking on more details there, we also see topic information on a per partition basis. For each partition, we can see the replicas and where each replica resides. Also, we can monitor consumer groups. We see two consumer groups reading from this topic, including the one that we created called App. Clicking on it, it takes us back to right where we started in the stream monitoring view. Now, we've got two partitions in the topic of interest, which means we can potentially scale out to a maximum of two consumers in a group. Right now, as you recall, we've only got one consumer, so let's add another one to that same consumer group. That's the one called App that we created a minute ago. We are essentially scaling our consumer group out. Uh, now, with that done, back in Control Center, looking at the consumer group called App, that's the one we're working with here, uh, what we see is the following. First, the consumer group is still reading from both partitions of the topic. But now there are two consumers in the group, Consumer App 1 and Consumer App 2. That's the one we just added. Yet at the consumer group level, it shows no missing messages. So adding this new consumer to the group doesn't appear to have broken any consumption at all. Scrolling down, we see both consumers. You can see exactly when we added consumer app two. If you check out this red bar here, uh, that actually coincides with when we started up the second consumer. 
This red bar is 100% expected. Within that time window, the first consumer was originally consuming from both topic partitions all by itself. When the second consumer started, there was a consumer group rebalancing, and one of the two partitions that had been on the first consumer went to the new consumer. But if you add the messages consumed between the two consumers, you get 350 by consumer one and nine by consumer two, you get the total messages produced of 359. That, that actually corresponds with how many messages were produced during that period. No messages were missed between the produce and the consume at the consumer group level. That's pretty cool. If you wanna see which consumer has which partition, you can view details. Here we see that the new consumer is happily consuming from partition one. Now, really, building horizontally scalable apps is one of the most important things that Kafka enables you to do. It solves a lot of infrastructure problems for you, and consumer groups are a key part of that job. And now you've seen it happen. A full consumer group rebalance kicked off from the command line and monitored completely from within Confluent Control Center.